morning, ladies and gentlemen, guests, fellow equine advocates. This is R.T. Fitch coming to you once again live from our northern abode and the world-famous Double R Saloon. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about a day late and a dollar short because I'd like to offer up a little bit of a New Year's message. Uh, and in that message, just briefly where we've been in the last year and where we see ourselves going. But first off, I'd like to thank an individual that not too many people knew about, but was very active with this blog with Straight From The Horse's Heart for several years. That individual's name was Geraldine and is Geraldine Bray. I met Geraldine via email several years ago and she was married to a really fine man because he put up with us emailing each other back and forth on a daily basis. But what she volunteered to do was to search the internet and to relay to me interesting stories about horses, wild horses, donkeys, wild burros, and she kept me loaded up. I have a special file with every day when I get up to work on this blog, she would be there with a multitude of suggestions for me. I can't tell you how much I did appreciate that. It saved me a great deal of time because obviously over the past several years I have not been as active writing, but have attempted to get to you guys the latest and greatest news regarding our equine friends, be they wild or domestic. Of course, we did have other people that helped, such as Debbie Coffey and in the early days, many, many different people from Simone Netherlands, Jerry Finch, and other authors. But Geraldine and I established a relationship. And unfortunately, as we age, there are life-changing events. And Geraldine lost her husband. She stepped away from the blog for several months and then came back and continued to help. And if she views this, I'm going to try to insist that she view this, I want to say thank you for everything that she did. Uh, but as life moves on, Geraldine moved on. Uh, she sold her home and her business and uh, moved away to be with family where their internet connection really stinks. So she uh, retired from working on the blog. And tied to this blog also, and remember, I started this blog over 12 years ago to promote our first book, Straight from the Horse's Heart, and it quickly became a, an advocate uh, check-in spot. And that's absolutely fine. Uh, we, it, it was a gathering place early on for folks who were concerned uh, with the issues of horse slaughter and also the wild horses and burros. Um, but after we started the blog and became more aware of situations ourselves, Terry and I uh, formed Wild Horse Freedom Federation. And we initially started out working with Bruce Wagman, a very, very fine, one of the best uh, animal uh, advocate attorneys in the United States. He's written some great books, and I consider him a personal friend of mine. But we began to build a board of directors. Coming on board was Debbie Coffey, who we met, I believe it was at the um, Twin Peaks uh, debacle back in 2010, 2011, somewhere there. And she came on board and was held the position in our board of directors as the vice president um, and director of Wild Horse Affairs. And from the beginning, we've had a longtime friend who we knew even prior uh, to forming Wild Horse Freedom Federation, and she was instrumental, uh, a Texas animal attorney, uh, Don Reveille. 
excuse me there, I'm looking at myself and the screen went black. It's kind of scary and hard to concentrate when you're staring at yourself on the screen. I do that because I might have a tendency to wander because I like to talk as I speak and this way I can kind of keep an eye on myself and make sure that doesn't happen. And Dawn's been with us from the very beginning. And as we move forward with the organization, we were uh, thankful to uh, be able to bring on board uh, Marjorie Farabee, who actually is a neighbor of ours, only lives about 18 miles away in Todd Mission, and she became our director of Wild Burrow Affairs. Everybody on the internet knows her as a Wild Burrow, Burrow lady. And she directs, I mean, this, this lady works all day long managing the care for over 400 equines. So she's quite an individual. Uh, and then we uh, were lucky enough to obtain the help of Carol Walker. As you know, a world-renowned, one of the very best equine photographers that there is. And Carol performed the function of being our eyes and witnessing for the horses at the roundups as our director of field documentation. And that was fantastic because as the years went by, uh, Terry and I have not been at liberty to travel as much as we have been, particularly because there was a time where I worked uh, overseas and rotated 28 and 28 into foreign countries. That was, and that afforded me, in other words, I had six months off and we could travel and go places and everything was great. But then I retired four years ago, and that lasted about 20 minutes. And um, I am currently uh, back to working uh, for an electrical contractor that is building data halls for a, a client that will remain unnamed. And it's been a lot of fun for me. Uh, it's been fun, but we haven't been able to travel. But back to uh, business, I spoke about Geraldine, but I'd officially uh, and publicly like to thank Carol and Debbie for all they've done over the years. Uh, about towards the end of the year, Debbie retired from being an active board member. Debbie works this issue eight hours a day, maybe 12 hours a day. And she needed to take a breather, but she didn't quit working. She's about as bad as retirement as I am. She continues um, working with her FOIAs. She continues um, reading them, uh, keeping us informed of what's going on. And we really appreciate all that she's done over the years. Uh, she's been that little voice in my ear of RT, you should do this, RT, you should do that. And um, sometimes I need that guidance. Well, no, I need that guidance most of the time, let's be honest about it. And being away from Terry, um, I don't get it directly, but I uh, appreciate being surrounded by all these fine ladies who try to keep me on the straight and narrow. And Debbie was that person. And Debbie, <laughs> we've done some wild things in the past. The problem with us at Wild Horse Freedom Federation is we're not out there in your face like other advocacy groups, because what we're doing is the research behind the scenes, looking at the illegalities or the illegalities of what our federal government is doing and what is not correct, and we find ourselves in investigations that we can't tell you about because they're ongoing and it'll blow the whole thing for us. So behind the scenes, we keep working. We're all volunteers. And Debbie volunteered herself here with her heart and her soul. We actually, I believe it was, we spent two years, and you guys didn't know about it, but we went undercover. We went undercover investigating long-term holding. Debbie had all of through FOIAs, the bill of ladenings, the information on how many horses were being shipped from a roundup to which, which long-term holding um, 
facility and also um, what contractors were billing the BLM. So it's very easy to calculate how many horses are in the care of these long-term holding contractors. So we decided to go out and count these horses. And you'd be amazed a lot of these long-term holding facilities, of course, are on public roads. Some of them even have public roads running right through them. And there are very few, uh, particularly in uh, Oklahoma, that are wooded. So you can get a pretty doggone good idea and count on how many horses are being warehoused. Well, after two years of that, we came up with a startling discovery that we thought we could nail the BLM with, and that is that the numbers don't match at all. And we gathered up all this information and sat down with Bruce Wagman, and I'm still talking about Debbie here, and um, found out that there really isn't much that we could do legally. You know, the federal government has very deep pockets. And we found out early on, chasing the BLM around, trying to stop uh, roundups, or what they call gathers, uh, with TROs, temporary restraining orders, doesn't cut it, doesn't work. And it's not even economically feasible for us because we pay for this three times, and I'll tell you how. Number one, even though we are against it, the BLM is using our money, our hard-earned tax dollars, to conduct these idiot roundups. And then we come in with donated money, our money, your hard-earned money, to try to get them to stop. And then the BLM hires attorneys with your money to defend themselves from the citizens that are now paying for all of this three times. And guess who usually wins? They do. So we thought we'd come at it this other angle. So disheartened to a degree that we really couldn't sue and that's something people have to realize. Sue them for that. It's a lot more complicated than that. We took all this information, and Debbie and Bruce put together a white paper on long-term holding. We sent a copy of that bound to every single representative in Washington, D.C. We made sure it got to all of your congressmen and hoping for a congressional investigation. And as you can see, that kind of went <clears throat> And then it was our hope that maybe an investigative journalist would pick up on this. I've always said this from the very beginning with this blog. I'm not the one to do it. I'm the paper boy. We're giving you that information out there, hoping somebody with the ways and the means picks up on it and runs. Well, nobody ran with it, unfortunately, but it's still out there. It's still documented, and you can download this, our white paper. It's impressive. Many thanks to Debbie and to Bruce for putting this together. You can download that from our uh, website, wildhorsefreedomfederation.org. It's worth the read. Maybe you know somebody who can make a difference and take this evidence out, and we'd be more than glad to help as far as we can. But Debbie has retired. I miss her, and I hope to see her send in some articles. She does these really great expose articles. I don't know if you all know the impact, but it's the truth of what's happening. <clears throat> and uh, straight from the BLM and their own records and their own paperwork. So, Deb, thanks for everything. And I hope, uh, you know, we can continue to support each other. And at the very end of the year, Kara Walker retired from being an active board member. Carol is a very strong, independent 
woman, artist, and advocate. In fact, a beautiful studio. And that is how she earns her income. And going to all these roundups and doing a lot of the things that she was doing for Wild Horse Freedom Federation obviously had a direct impact on her business and on her income. So she has stepped away as an acting director to pay a little more attention to her business. And Terry and I can definitely, and Dawn and Marjorie, we definitely appreciate where she's coming from. To be aggressive, um, there's, like I said, there's other advocacy groups out there, but they have paid staff. It is their job. This is not our job. We do it in our spare time. Um, and I can't believe how much time both Debbie and uh, Carol spent. I do, be I do believe how much time Terry spends because she does everything manually. And uh, she actually, at the end of the year, does handwritten thank yous to people for their donations because we do appreciate your support and your money is not spent on us. Virtually 100% goes towards working for the horses. Um, and as I said, we had all these things going on in the past and we've got some dynamite things going on in the future that of course I can't talk to you about in detail. And it has a lot to do with shutting down the pipeline of both wild and domestic horses going across the border to Mexico for a very brutal death for human consumption. We're not off that issue yet, ladies and gentlemen. But when the time is right, we'll talk. So be advised that any funds that you have generously sent our way have not gone to waste. In fact, last year, I don't know how to say this, but we've had two people who have passed away and have left in their wills generous donations. And at my age, it really means, I should say it's very important to me to be a prudent fiscal custodian of those funds because those people work their entire life to make that money. That's what we do. We sell blocks of our life for money and at the end of their life they elected to give that money to help the horses and damn it, we'll do it. We will make sure that those funds have not gone to waste and in honor of those people we keep moving forward. So with all that said, and what I intended to be a very short video, I would like to thank Geraldine, Jerry. I would like to thank Debbie Coffey, who I'm hopeful you'll still see her name out here on the internet, and to Carol Walker. I am really blessed. You know, I just talked about the whole board of directors, and uh, there's not one guy in there. I'm surrounded by a bunch of boss mayors. And I can't really say I'm a stallion anymore. I'm a gelding. But nonetheless, I get nipped on the butt so much I don't even have any hair on my hindquarters anymore. And uh, I want to thank them all. It's been a, it's an honor and it's a pleasure. And, and to the people who support us on this blog, I want to thank Grandma, Grandma Greg. I want to thank Shelly. And I won't tell everybody who your handle is. I want to thank all of you, both on Facebook, well, on all social media, because we're out on Twitter, and also uh, fellow organizations such as Equine Advocates, um, the Cloud Foundation, Habitat for Horses. Thank you all for your support and the camaraderie. One day, we're going to retire. Really. And one day, 
we would really like to get out of the advocacy business. I promised the whales and dolphins a long time ago when we got the horses fixed, I was coming back. And there's the issue of the wolves and the bison and everything else. Terry is very active in conservation because she is also a Texas master naturalist and she wants to get me into that program. She's working trying to help save the monarchs and helping the humming, hummingbirds. You ought to see her garden and check out uh, some of the videos that we posted up on YouTube for her hummers. So thanks to everybody out there and I know I've missed all, all kinds of people but uh, I, I needed to address our tremendous loss from the board and we hope the very best and someday some year we will be following you Carol and Deb and I'd like to just be working with the educational por portion of uh, the wild horses and also uh, put to bed the issue of our horses domestic and wild going across the borders for human consumption I just can't even believe that is still happening so from the double R saloon this is R.T. Fitch signing off and wishing you all the very best, a belated Happy New Year, and let's get together. Let's keep America great and keep the good things happening. We can only do it with your support. Thank you.